Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am Colonel Anthony Sanders, your MC for today's event. And on behalf of Brigadier General Tony Shepard, Land Component Commander, Arkansas Army National Guard, welcome to the retirement ceremony of Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem, uh, anthem by our very own Sergeant First Class Bunny Mickles and the invocation by Mr. Herman Williams. At this time, uh, to get us started, I would like to recognize a few of the distinguished guests that are in attendance with us today. Uh, we have uh, Lieutenant General Retired Mark Berry, former Adjutant General Arkansas National Guard, and also Arkansas House of Representatives, State Representative of District 82, and his lovely wife, Lisa. Brigadier General John Payne, Deputy Adjutant General, Arkansas National Guard. Colonel Mike Henderson, Army Chief of Staff and Commander, 233rd Regional Training Institute. Colonel Paul Hart, Director of the Joint Staff, and his wife, Elizabeth, Director of the National Guard Association of Arkansas. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Kenneth Brown, State Command Chief Warrant Officer. Colonel Darrell Neubauer, J3, Director of Military Support. Colonel Slade McPherson, G1, Arkansas Army National Guard. Colonel Chad Bridges, Commander, 39th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. Colonel Corey Saylor, Commander, 
87th Troop Command. Colonel Joel Lynch, Deputy United States Property and Fist Officer. Colonel Retired Marcus Hatton. Colonel Retired Walter Jones. Colonel Retired Gordon McCoy. And Colonel Retired Alex Finger. Let's give each and every one of our distinguished guests. I would also like to extend a special welcome to Lieutenant Colonel Williams' his family and friends. His wife, the lovely Miss Stephanie Williams. His children, Braylon, Caleb, and Drew. His grandchildren, Sage, Lincoln, Milani, Shiloh, Beard, Logan, and Casey. His mothers, Miss Sally Porter and Miss Linda Baker. And lastly, his sisters, Tanya, Shamika, and Cora. Thank you for being here. Please bear with me as I read Lieutenant Colonel Williams' bio. Uh, after 30 plus years of military service, is fairly lengthy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Williams enlisted in the Arkansas Army National Guard on February 24, 1992, into 2nd Battalion, 114th Aviation in Little Rock, Arkansas. He attended Officer Candidate School at the Arkansas Military Academy and received his commission as a 2nd Lieutenant on July 8, 1997, as an infantry platoon leader with Bravo Company, 2nd Battalion. 153rd Infantry Regiment. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from Excelsior College and a Master's degree in Management and Leadership from Western University. He is a graduate of the Infantry Officer Basic Course, the Infantry Captain's Career Course, Signal Officer Advanced Course, Human Resources Management Course, Intermediate Level Education Advanced Operations Course, and the Army National Guard Strategic Planning and Management Course. Lots of <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Williams' previous assignments include Rifle Platoon Leader, Bravo Company, 2nd Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment, Signal Platoon Leader, Bravo Company, 212 Signal Battalion, Executive Officer, Bravo Company, 212 Signal Battalion, Battalion S6, 3rd Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment, Commander, Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment, S3 Air, 2nd Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment, Battalion S3, 39th Brigade Special Troops Battalion. Battalion Executive Officer, 39th Brigade Special Troops Battalion. Battalion Executive Officer, 1st Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment. Brigade S1, 39th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, Bowie Team. Commander, Joint Forces Headquarters Detachment. Deputy Chief of Staff Operations, Force Integration Readiness Officer. Joint Forces Headquarters Detachment. Legislative Liaison. Joint Forces Headquarters Detachment. Commander, 2nd Battalion, 153rd Infantry Regiment. And culminating in his final assignment as the Anti-Terrorism Force Protection Officer, Joint Forces Headquarters Detachment, here at Camp Robinson. Harold's operational assignments include Operation Southern Watch, Kuwait, 1999. Operation Noble Eagle, Jacksonville, Arkansas, 2003. Operation Iraqi Freedom II, Baghdad, Iraq. 2004 to 2005. Humanitarian relief efforts in support of Hurricane Katrina, <coughs> New Orleans, Louisiana, 2005. Operation Iraqi Freedom, 2008, stationed at Camp Korean Village and Al Assad Air Base, Iraq. Lieutenant Colonel Williams' awards and decorations include the Bronze Star Medal, the Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, the Overseas Service Ribbon, the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal, and the Combat Infantry Badge, just to name a few. Lieutenant Colonel Williams and his family currently reside in New Market, Alabama. He is married to the former Stephanie Raven of North Little Rock, Arkansas. They have four children, his sons Jaden, Braylon, and Caleb, and his daughter Drew, as well as seven grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the host for today's ceremony, Brigadier General Tony Shepard. Good afternoon, everyone. What a day, what a day, what a day. 
I did not anticipate that Harold would be leaving this soon. <laughs> but here we are. Before I begin my prepared remarks, I would like to thank Bonnie for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem. Please join me in giving her a round. <laughs> Lieutenant General Berry and Mrs. Teresa Berry, welcome. Thank you for being here. Gerald Payne, Chief of Staff, Commanders, Sergeant Majors, a warm welcome to Mrs. Williams and her lovely family. Welcome to the celebration of a soldier who is the toe to toe with the best that we've developed as leaders around here. Harold, when you asked me to give remarks today, I was thrilled. You're a fantastic human being first, a fine husband, and a stand-up dad. Guys, let me tell you, your dad is so admiring of you all, so proud. You got to spend some time, some dear and cherished time, two weeks ago together. And all we can all we can do is brag about what the future holds. He's looking forward to the Williams family legacy. While we're heartbroken that you're leaving, I understand that you're building a path forward. And you've always marched to your own drum beat. Tomorrow belongs to you, and that's how you've conducted yourself. I can say with firm conviction that we've lost a very talented soldier in our organization. He was mission driven and always ready and always there to serve. Harold has served over 30 years and I've known him about 27 of those years. I was introduced to him by a mutual friend, Lieutenant Colonel Marshall Cooney. And I asked Harold this the other day, do you remember how we met? Like, nah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, there's so much that, is, that we are losing. Our energy, we were supposed to go hang out. And I'll tell you, by the time we got to about 7 o'clock, we were like, hey, we, we'll take a rain check for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're losing memory and we're losing energy. Well, that's all right. It's age. We embrace beer for it. So, Cooney introduced me to Harold because we were all students at UCA. And I went over there and Harold was playing basketball with some guys, uh, reading physical, and I'll talk a little bit about that physical part here uh, in a second. I know you're leaving one of the things in your adult career that defines you. Being a soldier defines you, but it's not who you are. You're multi-dimensional, and as I stated, you're a dad, you're a friend, you're a mentor, and you've been those things to me. I know that when you leave here, you're continuing that same life path, doing those same things. Because you're a leader, and when you're charged as a leader, you're granted that authority that was given to you for the competence and the trust that you have and others have in you. And I know that you'll do that in your civilian life. We're looking forward to hearing what you're going to do in your civilian life, so hopefully you've got that in your remarks. <laughs> it was designed in uh, good. <laughs> it was a privilege to become a leader, and Harold understood that charge, and he's doing lots of it, but he took that oath in his heart to become an officer. I've asked some folks about, can you tell me a little bit about Harold from your lens? And the one that stood up quite surprisingly to him was that he was a serious officer. I was like, what? People think that I'm a serious officer? Yes. And from my lens as well, you are. You took your job 
seriously. You conducted yourself in a manner that people thought that you were serious about what you were going to do. You expected that of others, and that's how you conducted yourself. It's one of those capstone principles of Harold that I admire. It's about love, it's about leadership, it's about faith. Maintain those attributes. You've got a deep sense of empathy, and you understand human behavior very well. You can read people, and you're not afraid to express some of those things. Thank you for your relentless pursuit to all of the organizations that you are. That was a long list, wasn't it? 30 years will give you that. But that's what you did for our organization, our state, and our country. Because of people like you, seeing is believing. And because of what they have seen, they can be. And I like that. I really admire that. You've, you've served as a true inspiration. General Johnson wanted me to offer uh, his regrets that he could not be here. But this is what he said. When I think about Harold Williams, I've been extremely impressed with his tremendous foresight and confident uncertainty, and confronting uncertainty. His innovation and the way that he conducted himself, which is so important given the many challenges that our, our state and nation face. Good luck to Harold in his future endeavors. Sean Gavin, a very close friend and mentor, wanted to also add his remarks. One of the best people I know, Karen always placed in the needs of the soldiers first. A terrific leader, and perhaps more importantly, a great teammate. Makes every team better with just his presence. I always want H. Dove on my team. And he wanted to add this piece. If the next chapter fall, falls short, he can always fall back on his pro golf career. <laughs> So I wanted you to hear from someone that was loved, General Johnson, someone who you served with, and then someone who led you. And that person was uh, General Stubbs. In his last remark, in his OER, he stated that you are among the top 25 people that he rated. And that's the type of person that Harold is in the top tier at all times. I'll segue to a, a, a short story. When we were lieutenants together, Harold came over from the infantry into the 212 battalion. And because he was not a signal soldier by uh, training in his uh, enlisted time, he wanted to make sure that he knew as much as he did. He was challenged by one of the NCOs and asked, if you're not doing it my way, then you might as well leave. And Harold asked, on what authority are you giving me this information? Where did you get that data from? Is it in the FM? So that's the type of seriousness that he, how he conducted himself. If you're going to express something for me to do, it better be in the field manual. And if it's not, we're not executing. I learned that from him, and I've repeated that story to him many times. He's heard it many times. And I'm, I'm really in awe that you did that, and I continue to conduct myself that way. As I wrap up my remarks this afternoon, I would like to invite General Barry to share some of his remarks. Before you come up, sir, um, what, what I wanted to do was to leave with 
one verse of a poem that Harold knows. I've taken the liberty of altering the poem a little bit. <laughs> the poem is by uh, Rudyard Kipling, the British guy, that many of you know as If. I've struck If, and I've replaced it with When, because this is the part that you and your journey uh, took. When you keep your head about you, as others are losing theirs and blaming it on you. When you trust yourself, when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. When you can wait and not be tired by waiting or be lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hated. And yet, don't look too good, nor talk too wise. That's the embodiment of how I see you from my lens. A remarkable soldier and a fine friend. Thank you very much for what you've done for our organization and my life. General Barry. Shepherd and I appreciate uh, the invitation to uh, make a few comments. And uh, I was on my way over Teresa and I had to drive about 90 miles an hour to get over here, literally, uh, from the western side of the state after church and because uh, I did not want to miss it. And my phone rang about uh, halfway over here and, and every time Tony calls me, it, uh, it says British Virgin Islands. I always think I won a lottery and somebody's won a thousand bucks in order to, uh, to get the money from me. So, uh, but uh, and I, I do want to congratulate uh, General Shepard again on his uh, well-deserved promotion and, and looking forward to great things uh, with him. Uh, Stephanie, uh, thank you so much for getting Harold to shave that off. Uh, when I saw him at Tony's promotion, I didn't know who it was. I thought he was supposed to get pickpocketed or something. But, uh, uh, he looks a lot better without it. And it will grow back. So, uh, and uh, uh, Harold's sons, uh, family, I want you to turn around and look. Chris, look behind you at all of these people uh, that are here to recognize your incredible father. Um, it's been a distinct pleasure for me knowing your dad. And um, he is a true professional soldier. Uh, he served as my legislative liaison, and bar none, he was the best one that I ever had. <laughs> No, I love you, brother. I, 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 I do, yeah. Uh, but I remember when uh, when the the chief, uh, I don't know if Scott Stanner was uh, the chief at the time, uh, but one of them, they came in and told me who my new legislative liaison was going to be. I'm going to do what? I said, they cannot, can nobody replace Anthony Sanders. I was, I was disturbed to say the least. And uh, they assured me, so you, you don't know Harold Williams. And uh, uh, I learned in a very short order uh, that Harold Williams is just an incredible professional soldier. And uh, the only thing that I hold against him, uh, I believe it was, uh, I don't think it was Slate, I'm pretty sure it was Harold, but when I went to his change of command up at Searcy, uh, the old fat general made the mistake of stepping on that patch out in the lobby. <laughs> and I had to do 39 push-ups. <laughs> and, uh, and that was a challenge to say the least. But, uh, but anyway, all, all kidding aside, I tell Harold, and I've told him a thousand times that I love him. And, and I do. Uh, I miss my time with all my soldiers. 
Uh, I miss my time with the National Guard. I miss my time with Harold Williams. But I always love you, brother. And I appreciate everything that you did for me to ensure that the Arkansas National Guard was a complete success. And I have a, just a small token uh, to leave with you and hope you enjoy it uh, as long as Stephanie's driving. <laughs> that was too good to, to think. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the retirement awards. It is customary in the military that when attention awards is given, military members rise to the position of attention while civilian guests stand if they are able. is yours. Attention orders. To all who shall see these presents, greet. This is to certify that Harold Dwayne Williams, United States Army, Arkansas National Guard, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army, effective 31 July 2022. Signed, James C. McConville, General, Chief of Staff, United States Army. Pull up. Please remain standing. We have a uh, couple of awards uh, to present to Lieutenant Colonel. Retired Williams. To all who shall see these presents, greet. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress 20 July 1942, has awarded the Legion of Merit to Lieutenant Colonel Harold D. Williams, Arkansas Army National Guard, for exceptionally meritorious service for over 30 years while serving in positions of increasing responsibility, culminating as the Anti-Terrorism Force Protection and Critical Infrastructure Programs Officer of the Joint Forces Headquarters, Arkansas. Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams has been a model of efficiency in performing his duties and consistently placed soldier care above all else. His displayed values, technical and tactical acumen, set him apart as one of the truly outstanding leaders of the organization. Lieutenant Colonel Williams' exemplary leadership and steadfast performance are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the Arkansas Army National Guard, and the United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, Signed, John A. Jensen, Lieutenant General, Director, Army National Guard. The Governor of Arkansas has awarded the Arkansas Exceptional Service Medal to Lieutenant Colonel Harold Dwayne Williams for 30 years of honorable military service. Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams has been a great asset for the Arkansas Army National Guard. His sacrifice and allegiance to his country and immunity is greatly appreciated by all who have served. His dedication to duty reflects great credit upon himself, Joint Force Headquarters Detachment, and the Arkansas Army National Guard, signed Asa Hutchinson, Governor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. A few more words. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Williams will be presented with the National Guard Bureau Certificate of Service. And it reads, the National Guard Certificate of Service is awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams in recognition of more than 30 years of service in the armed forces of the United States, including 30 plus years of service in the National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Williams will now be presented with a certificate of appreciation from the state of Arkansas. And I quote, on behalf of the grateful citizens of Arkansas, this certificate is presented in appreciation to Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams in acknowledgement of a job well done in his service with the Arkansas National Guard. Through this certificate, the people of Arkansas wish to pay homage to you for this service and upon your retirement from the Arkansas National Guard to express every hope for continued success. Our, gra our gratitude and respect go with you. Sign, Asa Hutchinson, go, post war.
this time, we would like to recognize Lieutenant Colonel Williams' wife, Ms. Stephanie Williams, for her support and encouragement throughout Lieutenant Colonel Williams' military career. Ms. Williams, would you please come forward to the stage? Brigadier General Shepard would now present the spousal certificate of appreciation to Ms. Stephanie Williams. The certificate reads, the state of Arkansas and Arkansas National Guard certificate of appreciation is presented to Ms. Stephanie Williams in recognition, of, in recognition of her unfailing support and understanding for her husband on the occasion of his retirement from the Army National Guard. Her faithful and devoted service helped to make possible his lasting contribution to the state of Arkansas and the nation. Signed, Asa Hutchinson, Governor. Hall of Famer here, General Shepard, sir. I want to thank you for your kind words, your counsel, and the friendship I share with you and your family. You're the epitome of what this great nation has to offer if you are committed to a dream. We're all proud of the fact that you're Arkansas's very own. And I'm proud of the fact I can talk to you friends. I'd like to recognize the Arkansas Army National Guard 106 band. I have a quartet here. Everyone doesn't get a band. I thank you. I feel good. Thank you. Also, to reiterate what General Shepard already said, uh, to our first class, as always, your voice is as beautiful as a songbird. 
thank you for your rendition of the National Anthem. I appreciate it. <laughs> to my cousin slash brother, Mr. Herman Williams, for the invitation and the benediction to come and the leadership you've shown throughout my life. I say thank you. To my friend, uh, Colonel Chad Bridges, commander of the 39th IBCT, Beast Bowie 6, for allowing me to conduct my, this ceremony at home, the headquarters of the Bowie Brigade. If you have a few minutes after this ceremony, take the opportunity to stroll the hall where you'll see examples of a brigade who answers this nation's call. Heroes that embody the Bowie spirit and a tradition of excellence. Most of you can't even imagine what it takes to coordinate an event like this, but let me assure you, we have a team of professionals whom I have to happen to call friends. While words can't express my gratitude, I can simply say thank you to my master of ceremonies, Colonel Sanders. Thank you. Colonel Retired Hatley, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Chapel, Lieutenant Colonel Phillips, Sergeant Fort First Class Corey Aiken, Captain Antonio Mosby of the Little Rock Fire Department, and a host of other people who helped make this event possible. If you know me, you know if you hang around me long enough, you will become a part of my family. My beloved family members, I've come from Alabama, Florida, Missouri, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Texas to be here. Uh, I want to recognize my brothers, Donnie and Ronnie, that are here as well. Uh, my cousin Annie and her husband, Reggie. And, let me see, uh, <laughs> uh, who's that? Shannon. Shannon and Charles, there you go, thank you. Uh, it's Zeke. Uh, and my sister Ford. But, um, I have neighbors, moms, brothers, sisters, cousins, brothers of Cap Alpha Psi, Fraternity Incorporated, the best fraternity in the world, General Shepherd. Um, in laws and outlaws in attendance. And though I can't mention everyone by name, I'm confident you know exactly how much you mean to me. Um, yesterday I was surprised by an extra special guest who happens to be in the audience today. An 84-year-old Korean War veteran, Wilbur, with over 200 jumps with the 101st Airborne. And he's still jumping. He happens to be my favorite deer hunting buddy and a dear friend. Command Sergeant Major William Shepard, would you please stand? Just so you know, I'm fully aware of my friends taking side bets on when I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> to ensure that I don't cry, I'm fully prepared to take very long pauses. <laughs> Look at Colonel Neubauer because he's funny. But. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But if all that fails, and I do cry, can we just keep that between us? <laughs> well, there's no way I can explain what the past 30 years in uniform has meant to me in the next few minutes. And my goal is to be brief in my summary. The one thing I want you to walk away from this ceremony knowing is that one of the greatest honors of my life We're sharing time with you. Being a soldier given the opportunity to protect friends, family, and neighbors across this great state and nation is a humbling experience. Unlike some people who knew exactly what they wanted to do in life, I had no idea. But I've always trusted in God, <coughs> and now I'm richer than I've ever been. Not in a financial sense, but in living a life filled with love, hard work, great friends, and a remarkable family. Today I is filled with emotions and I have vivid memories. Uh, a steady stream of faces, they, they, they march through my mind. Faces of mentors, peers, and mentees alike who trained me, led me, disciplined me, inspired me, followed me, served with me, loved and cared for me, and some gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. I remember uh, working a job at the Little Rock Air Force Base where I had my first glimpse at one of the nation's first gated communities, a military base. I fell in love with the sharp uniform, the neatly trimmed grass, and the laser sharp edging around the side. My first time leaving Arkansas was on a plane to Fort Knox, Kentucky, headed to basic training where I would forever be changed by the incredible drill sergeants charged with transforming me from a civilian to a soldier. I remember my extra training at Officer Cannon School. Colonel Shieldcutt, thank you very much. I remember annual training periods at Fort Chaffee, Fort Pope the National Training Center, with all my fellow soldiers. The Army's been my life, been an instrument in my profession, but being a member of our buoy team, and more specifically, the Gunsling Battalion, has been one of my greatest loves. It's where I started as a brand new second lieutenant, and I ended as a battalion commander. It's where I learned the relationship between NCOs and officers is the foundation of every unit, and I had the privilege to serve with one of the best. Command Sergeant Major Johnny Brown is be here today, but he's one of the most selfless, disciplined, encouraging, and committed leaders I've ever, I've ever served with. <coughs> and I'm thankful for his friendship. I'm getting close, guys. I remember Y2 and the Gunslinger team. I remember General Kirk Van Pelt, Major Clay Jones. Colonel Kerry Schultz, Colonel Chad Bridges, Colonel Sean Gavin, Major Jonathan Jones, Captain Scott Chamberlain, Lieutenant Colonel Greg Hill, Colonel Joel Lynch, Major Keith Wilson, General John Stubb, Colonel Mike Robbins, Colonel Gerald Neubauer, and Command Sergeant Major Parks, and so many others that helped mold me, and I'm forever grateful. That team was an incredible team and they will be forever, my brothers. I stand on the soldiers, on the shoulders of the Buffalo soldiers and so many trailblazing minority leaders of the Arkansas National Guard. Leaders like General Johnson, General Angelo, Colonel Retired McGee, Colonel Retired Jones, 
from retired figures and from retired Indians. And so many others who have encouraged me to give back to our community and help mentor the next wave of leaders. I've got to acknowledge uh, this room. This room is family. The gentleman you see lying along the walls in uniform, standing so professionally, are my brothers and they are my sisters. And I appreciate everything that they've given me and every moment I've served with them. I've got to acknowledge a few military couples who've helped me and stepped me along our journey. And I'm getting to a close. Obviously, General Jeffrey Ewan Zane, thank you so much. Uh, General John Stubbs and James Stubbs. Colonel Kerry Shilcutt and Angela Shilcutt. Colonel retired John Stewart and his wife Kelly. Colonel retired Marshall and Jennifer Cooney. Major retired Tony and Emmer Wilson. The Shipmans, the Tomans, And uh, these final three officers, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Will and Tracy Phillips. This couple is ready to support at a minute's notice. No matter what the issue is, wherever it is, they're there. And I thank you for always being there for me. Colonel Todd and Miranda Severe. I and I met when I was a second lieutenant, and he was a specialist in Bravo Company, second of 153rd Infantry. Brother, it's been a privilege to watch you grow from being mentored to sharpening my heart. You know the great expectations I have for you, and I'll always be there. Colonel Anthony and Tawana Sanders. Strangely enough, Anthony and I knew one another before we actually met because of my cousin Keith. We were formally introduced as captains when we worked ADOS, and I was a training officer of the Gunslinger Battalion. What could have easily been a competitive relationship almost instantly turned into a brotherhood. We have vowed to support one another in no the rank, position, or circumstance. And he has always been in my corner. And I have great expectations of you. We have shared the full spectrum of emotions from you are Thank you. I'm going to bring this to a close. Um, today is not a sad occasion. To the Williams kids, Jaden, and Braylon, and Caleb, Drew. I know it was never your choice to have your dad gone as much as I was gone. But you have served with distinction and honor, and I will be more, much more available to you and my infantry squad of grandchildren. <laughs> In my life, the most powerful examples of strength, resilience, perseverance, and love have come from women in my life who would not allow me to. For me, it started with my grandmother, Aretha Williams, and all her sisters. Although they have gone home, and their, their legacy remains with me and the rest of our family. Mama Sally and Mama Baker, would you please stand?
my career, I was never good at balancing the scales between Army and my family. Luckily, Stephanie has always had patience and showed me grace. She's seen me on my worst day and been a pillar of strength. She's the reason I've had any measure of success wherever the Lord has placed me. She has the most energy, biggest personality, genuine concern for soldiers, love of our family, and is a fierce protector of her husband. Babe, as we retire to our next chapter, my prayer is that we continue to spark the light that we can I love you. I'm going to bring this home now. <laughs> but before I close, I'd like to share a poem. <laughs> a poem that was shared with me by one of the senior members of my fraternity, an Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame member, Coach Oliver Elders. I don't know the original author, but I think it's appropriate because it summarizes how many of us feel when we retire. It goes like this. Sometimes when you're feeling important, and sometimes when your ego is in bloom, sometimes when you take for granted you're the best qualified in the room. And sometimes when you think you're going to leave an unfillable hole, follow this simple example and see how it humbles your soul. Take a bucket and fill it with water. Put your hand in it up to your wrist. Take your hand out and the hole that's left in it is a measure of how much you'll be missing. You can splash all you want when you're in it, and you can kick up water galore, but stop and you'll find in a minute it's much the same as before. The moral of this example is to be the very best that you can. Be proud of yourself, but remember, there is no indispensable man. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Harold Williams, retired. And I thank you. Uh, we would now have the uh, benediction by Mr. Herman Wood.
for the civilians in the room, the, uh, the Army Song is located on the back of the program. Uh, we will now have the Army Song played by the 106th Army Band, and we will follow that in the end of the video. Thank you. 